API Gateway is a fully managed service that lets you create API endpoints that can handle up to 10,000 requests per second by default and can be scaled further by simply raising a support ticket. It lets you configure routes and direct HTTP requests to some actual code and is often used in conjunction with Lambda to create APIs. But it's much more than just a HTTP router. It offers a lot of useful features like authentication and authorization so you can control who can access your API and what they are allowed to do. It supports request validation where you can set a schema model and have API Gateway validate the request for you so that only valid requests are passed through to your Lambda function. It supports both rate limiting which helps protect you against denial of service attacks and it also supports usage quotas, which is very useful for SaaS applications that need to limit how much a user is allowed to use the system. It supports WebSockets as well, so you can build real-time two-way communication applications such as chat apps. And it has support for caching and it integrates with CloudWatch and CloudWatch logs to give you built-in monitoring for how your APIs are performing and to also audit user requests. And it integrates with AWS WAF to provide web application firewall capabilities, which helps stop SQL injection attacks as well as other attacks such as denial of service. And you don't pay for it if no one is using it. With API Gateway, you pay for the number of requests that API Gateway process for you. The most important concepts when it comes to API Gateway are resources and stages. Resources are the blueprint for your API where you configure the available routes and for each route, you need to define the public interface for this API method, otherwise known as a method request, which consists of authentication methods, request headers, the model to validate the request with, the, and the query strings and so on. And then a request is actually made against the integration target, which can be a Lambda function, but you can also route requests to other AWS services directly or to another HTTP endpoint or to a VPC link so you can forward the request to a private load balancer or even to a mock where you configure some stubbed response objects. And when the integration target responds, you can map the status code, HTTP headers and payload to the response format that you want to return to the caller of your HTTP endpoint. And finally, the method response is the public interface for this API method that your caller should expect in the response. It's worth noting that the API gateway doesn't do any validation to ensure that the actual response matches the interface. So you have to do that in your own code and make sure that the method response model match what your application actually returns. And once you've defined the blueprint for all your routes, you will need to deploy them to a stage which would have a base URL. As you can see in this screenshot, all the routes you have configured would be relative to this base URL. You can deploy the same set of resources to different stages and promote changes from one stage to another. Also, features such as caching and the throttling need to be configured at the stage level and not as part of resources. Finally, another key concept to remember is that if you want to use a user-friendly domain name, then you can use a custom domain names to do that. And you can even use a base path mapping to stitch multiple API gateway APIs under the same custom domain name, which is useful when you have microservices, but you want to expose all your APIs under the same root domain.